So, uh, Connor Bedard is pretty good at hockey, is he not? Let's go over his entire season so far, because heading into the U18s, this is probably the best prospect we have seen in a very long time to suit up in any of the CHL leagues, do their thing, and just be on the hype train. Er, no, that's not right. We're on the hype train for him. He is not necessarily on the hype train. He is the train, I guess. Okay, that was a weird way to start off the video, but let's go over Connor Bedard and his 2021-2022 season because, as we said, the U18s are going to be starting up in a few weeks here, and Connor Bedard, after showcasing to us what he did last season and what he did this season for the Regina Pats in the WHL, I think it's very clear to see that he is going to be one of the main contributors in this entire tournament. So, the reason Connor Bedard is in the headlines is because he recently wrapped up his Regina Pats season in the WHL with a five-point game. Here's the tweet from the Regina Pats in their Twitter account. Bedard gets five points this afternoon thanks to an empty net goal, giving him 100 points in his 16-year-old season. Simply incredible. We have no words. And yeah, I kind of left out that last part, 100 points in 62 games played on the year. Now, Normally, when you take a look at guys that are going to be drafted in the WHL and you see their point production metrics, you know, if you get 100 points in 60 games, that is normally good enough for you to be a top-line, top-of-the-class prospect. In fact, Dylan Genther, who went ninth overall last year in 2021, had 91 points in 59 games played this season. Connor Bedard was a bit higher than him on the score sheet here in the WHL. You could see Arshdeep Baines, Canuck Signe, was number one in the dub. Teammate Benjamin King was number two. Logan Stankovin, big draft steal in last year's NHL draft by the Dallas Stars, was third. Bedard was fourth. And then you have everybody else following as well. But for Connor Bedard to be in this position... It's kind of mind-blowing because he is in his draft minus one year. If you were to go out there and project a guy getting 100 points in 60 games played and said, okay, this guy's going to be drafted in a few weeks. He's going to be drafted in 2022, for example. Like, Bedard would be number one. You understand that, right? Shane Wright is good, but the thing is, Connor Bedard has just been so above and beyond phenomenal that... Even if he was eligible for this year's draft, I think he probably could have gone first. If not, if you wanted to say, oh, it might have been Shane Wright, he would have very least gone second. So, for Connor Bedard to be doing all this in his draft minus one year, to be in the position where he's going to be doing this again next year before getting drafted, it makes things extraordinarily interesting when you see where the 2023 draft is going to go. Also, this Connor Bedard thing got super popular because there are just a whole bunch of stats going out there talking about how good he has been at 16 years old. TSN tweeted out, Connor Bedard becomes the youngest player in WHL history to reach 50 goals in a season. He's got 51 goals in 62 games played. Yo, the guy's still 16 years old. He turned 16 back in July, so he'll be 17 by the time July 17th rolls around this year. And he's the youngest guy to ever score 50 goals in this league. He's the third 16-year-old in general and the fourth to record 100 points in the same season. If you go over to the WHL and the historical record books here, you're going to find that all the other guys that have scored at the pace that Connor Bedard has in the WHL are all, no disrespect to these players, but... No name NHL players. I mean, it's not really a contest here to see who stands out the most when you take a look at Dan Lucas, Glenn Goodall, and Ken Yaramchuk. If you take a look at all these guys here and you see what they have done at the NHL level, yeah, Dan Lucas played, what is that, six games in the Philadelphia Flyer system? And that was his entire career. Glenn Goodall played a whole bunch in Germany, but never in the WHL, or excuse me, in the NHL. He played a few games in the AHL, but that was about it. And then Ken Yaramchuk was mostly an NLA Swiss League guy, but he did spend some time in the Chicago Blackhawks and Toronto Maple Leaf systems back in the 80s and 
Yeah, you can kind of see the magnitude of players that have been in the same company as Bedard. In fact, the best one that stands out to me is Jeff Friesen, who had 83 points in 70 games as a 16-year-old back in 92-93. He had a long storied NHL career compared to a lot of the guys at the top of this list. But long story short, any time you have somebody in today's hockey leagues, and I say hockey leagues because, of course, this isn't the NHL, this is the WHL, who can go out there and produce a season that is as good as all the older seasons from, what is that, like 40, 50 years ago? You're probably doing something right if you're Connor Bedard, putting your name alongside of all these other guys who have had so much success in the WHL and having all the hype as the top prospect in the 2023 draft at the same time. This entire Bedard thing also went a little bit more viral when we had Cam Robinson tweet this. 16-year-old seasons in the CHL, Connor McDavid had 26 goals and 99 points for the Erie Otters. Connor Bedard had 51 goals and 100 points in his 16-year-old year. Obviously, Cam left out games played. That actually belongs to McDavid in terms of which one was more impressive because McDavid had his 99-point season in 56 games versus Connor Bedard, who had his 62-game campaign support his 100-point year. You have to take a look at the leagues, though, because the WHL is known as being a lot more of a defensively grindy kind of league. The OHL has a lot more star power for its forwards. Also, you have to take a look that Bedard is a completely different player than McDavid in a completely different situation this year. What he accomplished was amazing, but it doesn't mean that he'll be McDavid, he'll be Bedard, and that will be special in its own way. Just try to enjoy great things. McDavid also was six months older and he had way more talent to work with. I'd say that accounts for the extra six games that are being pointed out over here for cherry-picked stats. And so even though Connor Bedard might not be exactly what we thought McDavid was going to be or what McDavid is, there still is so much to be excited for to the point that it bears repeating every time he goes out there and he does something great. And with his season just concluding over here for Regina, in the regular season at least, it's even more mind-boggling to see just the numbers and the points and everybody else that Bedard is in company with. You gotta remember, Connor McDavid in his... Draft minus one year, so his 16-year-old year. He did have 99 points in 56 games. He put up 120 in 47 games the next season. He was out with injuries for a good chunk of that year. Was that the year where he broke his hand fighting somebody? Because Connor McDavid apparently doesn't know how to fight, but he got into a fight? Something like that. But either way, that Erie Otter squad where he had that 120-point marker was pretty stacked as well. You had Alex Dabrinkit, you had Dylan Strom, you had Travis Dermott, Darren Radish, all these guys that eventually became good NHL players. Mason Marchment was also on that team too, funny enough. So, not to say that Connor McDavid had the best supporting staff in the world, but I just wanted to bring it up that McDavid on his team as a 17-year-old definitely was not surrounded by bums, you know? And I'm not going to go out there and say that Connor Bedard will be in 2022-2023, just bringing it up that there are some very good players that McDavid was playing alongside of. And speaking about good players, we are going to see a lot of them at the U18s coming up later this year. Connor Bedard last season had 14 points in seven U18 games. You can see this is the list from last year's overall tournament. Bedard, Wright, Mishkov, all guys that were not going to be drafted in that season, yet they outproduced all of the draft guys in 2021. So McTavish, Pennelli, you had Liesel, Stankovin, Olin Zellweger, Genther, and Wright, Bedard, and Mishkov, all 2022-2023 guys were on top of everybody. And so with Connor Bedard coming back, it's going to be really fun to see where he goes in terms of point production, in terms of goal production. Yes, he was the third most productive player in the tournament last year, but his goal production was not near the top. I mean, it was good. Seven goals, of course, in seven games was good enough to tie him with Samu Solomon, Isaac Roseanne, but there were other guys that overtook him in that respect, right? Mishkov especially. And so... I'm going to be interested in seeing if Bedard goes out there and outproduces Matvey Mishkov's 12 goals in seven games at last year's tournament. Of course, he's probably going to be there too, unless there's some controversy with Russian players going over to the U18s. I'm not really too sure how that's going to work, but either way, 
Connor Bedard is going to have himself a stage to work on, and I'm just excited to see how that goes down. So let me know in the comments all your thoughts about Connor Bedard and everything that we have talked about in this video, his WHL season, his 100-point marker, the statistics, and the comparable seasons from 40, 50 years ago, and how those stack up today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I, and bye. <laughs>